Um, why we're coming together today, really today, is um, is focusing on trauma um, and trauma-informed practice. Today's part of a programme of support for people working across health and, and social services, um, and it aims to explore how adopting a trauma-informed approach can support planning um, and support the workforce. Responding to trauma is a public health priority, um, as we will all be very aware at the moment, especially given where we are with the, the pandemic. So today, really, and you, you'll have had your joining instructions and hopefully you've had a chance to have a, a look at those, but today's really about developing an awareness of the impact of trauma, or further developing your awareness, strengthening your understanding of the workforce development needs of the workforce in respect of trauma and, and trauma support, um, and exploring how a trauma-informed approach can aid recovery um, and how to put that into place. And it's interesting seeing those of you who were able to respond to that Mentimeter um, slide that was put up just now. Um, I think that reflects your expectations of the day and, and what you want to try and get out of, of the day. We'll also share with you some of the resources and the support that's available to support you and to support others, and to support people that you work with or the workforce. Um, some of those you may be, avail may be aware of already, but um, there may be some new things um, that you will be interested in too. So the session is going to be interactive. There will be an opportunity to um, provide your thoughts and reflections either via the chat um, or we're going to be using Mentimeter um, over the course of the day as well. But we're also going to be hearing from others um, in the sector and I will um, introduce them um, as we go along. They're going to provide more of an insight into what a trauma-informed approach looks like. They're going to provide us some, with some examples of good practice and they're going to help us to think through how trauma-informed practice and policy can support staff well-being and people who are supported um, by all our colleagues in adult social care. Um, in terms of the agenda, uh, we are going to hear from a couple of speakers first this morning, then have a bit of a, an interactive session, then we'll stop for a break at 11 for about 10 minutes so you can pop and get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, um, and then we'll come back um, hear from two more speakers um, and have another interactive session um, and then finish up for half past 12 today. Um, there is a huge amount of national and local ambition and commitment to the culture change needed to embed trauma-informed practice across social services um, and across the system services and the workforce that we work with. Um, and really today is about highlighting that there's lots of incredible work that's going on um, across the different parts of the sector um, and in different organisations. And it's going to be really interesting to hear from um, some of you either via the Mentimeter discussion um, or from the um, comments and thoughts in the, the chat box about how you're involved in some of that or how, how you might get more involved in some of that as, as we go along. Um, from my own organisation's perspective, from the SSSC, um, as the workforce regulator and the lead for workforce development in the sector, we're very committed to supporting trauma-informed practice and policy. We were part of the reference group that helped to um, develop the um, trauma framework. Um, as I mentioned, my team is quite involved in supporting services, employers, um, workers with leadership development activity. And it won't surprise you that, especially over the last year, a lot of that leadership development activity has had a well-being focus. Um, lots of helping people at different levels um, in the workforce to think about their own leadership capability um, and how they might um, develop that and use that further to support their own well-being, but also the well-being of, of others. There is a lot of support available and you're going to hear a bit more about that today um, to people in the sector but what we're also hearing from workers especially in social services um, and probably in other parts of the sector as well is that um, it's great to have all this support and it's great to have access to these resources but sometimes people actually just need a bit of time and space to reflect on what's happened or what is happening to them at the moment um, and want to do that with like-minded people people who have experienced something similar um, so we're providing some of some opportunities and some space for people to do that um, as well. And just to give you an example of that, a bit of work that we're involved in at the moment with Scottish Care and CCPS um, is going to be writing out to managers and frontline workers in care homes, care at home and housing support services um, to ask them what kind of further support they might need. Because what we are hearing from people in the sector is it's great to have all these resources, but actually sometimes sending out more guidance or more information about resources is just too much and people just need 
different things and different types of support. So we're going to be writing out to people and asking specifically what kind of support they need and, and we'll we'll respond um, to that. So, but in terms of support, as I said, there's lots out there. Um, we have a national wellbeing helpline, um, which will be shared with you if you don't have it already. It's 0800 111 4191. And that's a 24 seven service for those requiring psychological support. Um, there are people on the helpline that can offer advice, a listening ear, signposting, um, or onward referral to other services locally if that's required. We've also got the National Wellbeing Hub for workers in health and social care, um, which is a great resource. That's www.promise.scot, um, and it provides a range of self-care and wellbeing resources and signposting to lots of different mental health and other support services. Um, and we've also got a fairly new workforce specialist service which offers confidential mental health assessment and treatment um, for the regulated health and social care professionals um, in Scotland. And details of that are on the hub at the moment. You'll also, if you go onto the hub, you can find details of various webinars that focus on different aspects of well-being um, and support. Um, and one of the um, services that we've been involved in at the SSSC with Ness and with others is the Coaching for Wellbeing service, which has been offered for probably about eight or nine months now. And there has been a really high take up of that coaching um, support from people in health, but also um, in social services. And we're, we've been very lucky that we've been able to get funding to be able to extend that um, for the next year as well. So if you haven't seen that, then please do go and have a look at that, because that might be something that might be useful to you or others that you work with. 